welcome you all to the last part of the unit 8 so today i am going to discuss with you about few more things regarding characteristics of living organisms so in my last two videos i have discussed with you regarding the common characteristics of living organisms so these are the main and common characteristics of living organisms and uh, in last two videos, I have discussed you about the cellular organization, nutrition, respiration, irritability or coordination, excretion and movement. So, in this video, I am going to discuss with you about the reproduction and growth and development. So, now let's see uh, what is reproduction, growth and development of organisms in details with this lesson. Uh, now let's see what is reproduction. Reproduction is the most important living characteristic uh, that involves in ma maintaining the continuity of life on our earth. So if you consider the definition for reproduction, it is a biological process in which an organism gives rise to young ones or new offsprings similar to themselves for the continuation of their species. Uh, so, uh, reproduction is a common characteristic that you can observe in all plants, animals and in microorganisms. So, uh, this helps to continuity of life on our earth. If we consider the process of reproduction, it is in two main types as sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So, when we uh, considering the sexual reproduction, uh, there should be two or individuals of the same species to produce new offspring in this process. Here, a sperm cell and an egg cell unite to form a zygote. This zygote develops into the new organism uh, within the process of development. So, uh, this is the sexual reproduction and when we move to asexual reproduction, there are no need of the involvement of two organisms to produce one single new offspring. Instead, uh, one matured organism can produce new offspring uh, which, are, which is having identical features and characteristics to the uh, parent organism. So this is the two main types of reproductions you can observe within the plants, animals and microorganisms. Now let's see how these plants perform the process of reproduction. Uh, so when considering the reproduction in plants, uh, they show all the two main types of reproductions. The first, time, first type is asexual mode of reproduction. Here all the vegetative parts of the plants, that means in except the seeds all the other parts of the plants which involve in producing new plants are called as vegetative vegetative parts so here in this diagram it shows some examples for vegetative parts you find in the plant so uh, these parts can produce new plants uh, through the process of asexual reproduction and uh, the second mode you find in plant is sexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction occurs through the process of pollination. Uh, in pollination, uh, pollen grains and the ovules that you find within the ovary of the plant uh, unite through the process of fertilization and it produces seeds and these seeds germinate into, uh, in germinate and produce new plants so these are this is the two main types of reproduction that you can find in plants now let's see how this reproduction occur in animals uh, here also you can observe the two main types of reproduction as sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction so if you consider the sexual reproduction it occurs in two main ways the first type is internal fertilization uh, they are the fertilization occurs inside the body of the female organism and 
The other type is external fertilization. The other fertilization occur in the external environment. So, uh, for the sexual reproduction, there should be two organisms of the separate sexes or uh, the organism with the combined sexes. So, uh, in this diagram, uh, you can observe the life cycle of the frog. So, uh, frog shows the external fertilization and here uh, it shows how the internal fertilization occur in animals. Uh, so, uh, you will learn regarding these things in further uh, things further in uh, next unit. So, I am not going to explain more details regarding sexual re reproduction here. And now let's see how the asexual reproduction occurs in animals. So, uh, there are a few methods for occurring asexual reproduction in animals that is fission, budding, fragmentation and parthenogenesis. And uh, I am not going to explain each this uh, method here because uh, these things also uh, will be taught in uh, for in future. So, uh, now let's see how microorganisms do reproduction. Uh, microorganisms also show both sexual and asexual reproduction. If you consider the asexual reproduction of microorganisms, uh, there are two identical offsprings are produced by a single microbial cell. So here, uh, in this simple video clip, it gives how it shows how the microorganisms uh, reproduce asexually by binary fission. And if you consider the sexual reproduction of microorganisms, uh, they are the genetic materials of two microbes of the same species mix together to form the uh, genetically different new microorganisms. So, uh, this is how microorganisms perform reproduction. Uh, now let's see the next living characteristic of living organisms uh, that is growth and development. So this is the last living characteristic that I am going to discuss with you. So uh, if we dis define growth and development, growth is the increase in size and mass of the organism and the development means the transformation of organism when it passes the different uh, growth stages of its life. So, uh, when studying this uh, life cycle of butterfly, you can clearly identify that at the beginning uh, it has eggs and after has hatching eggs, it produces the caterpillar and the uh, caterpillar produces a cocoon and within the cocoon it develops the butterfly. So, uh, the growth and the development of the butterfly taken place in different stages and also if you consider the growth and the development of a plant it also shows <coughs> different stages the growth of a plant start from a seed and uh, after passing different stages of a life cycle it produces a huge tree If we consider the steps involving in growth and development of organism, uh, it can be expressed using three major steps as shown here. So, uh, in the first step, the cells increase its size and after increasing the size and achieving the maximum size and maximum growth, the cells begin to uh, divide and with the division of cells, it increases the cell number and uh, form, so formed cells differentiate to form, form different tissues, organs, system and build up the whole organism. So this is the total process involving growth and development of organisms. Now we have discussed all the living characteristics of organisms. By considering those characteristics, Let's try to classify viruses under 
living organisms or non-living things. Uh, so if we consider the viruses, they are having a tiny structures. That means they are too small. So you cannot observe viruses through a light microscope. Instead, you have to use an electron microscope to observe my viruses and also they are non-living structures we call them as non-living structures because they don't show the living characteristics as other organisms and also they are non-cellular as uh, when compared to other microorganisms viruses don't have a cellular structure so uh, we call them as non-cellular and also they have no cellular organelles for performing metabolic activities. And when considering the structure of a virus, it contains a protein coat called as a capsid and their nucleic acid is containing within this capsid. So if you consider the type of nucleic acids containing in the viruses, they contain uh, DNA or RNA but not both. And also, uh, they always need a host cell, that means a living cells for uh, continuing reproduction. They cannot reproduce freely as other microorganisms, so they act as a parasite. And also, they have different shapes and sizes. So these are the main characteristics you find in viruses and uh, by considering, considering all the characteristics, we call them as non-living structures, so which show few living characteristics. Now here you have the diagram containing uh, the viruses of different shapes. So these are the common shapes you can find among the viruses. And also here, uh, is a diagram which explains the structure of the virus. So here, uh, here it has labeled the parts of the virus so you can understand the structure of a virus. And also you can see that they don't have a cellular uh, organization as in other microorganisms. So uh, these are the main things that you should know about viruses. Now we have come to the end of the unit date. So uh, it's your responsibility to watch all the three videos regarding unit 8 and make your own short note for the lesson. Uh, so I'm going to wind up my video and let's meet with another new lesson uh, in my next video. Goodbye.